Hey guys, Andre from Chrome FX Films here, and today's tutorial will be about creating your very own interactive cutscene code in JavaScript. I already have code that I made earlier, so you can see generally what it will look like. I will then break it down and show you how to make it. Let's get started. So I'm going to press the play button now and show you how the code works. Enable maximize on play, and here we go. So there's the first animation, which is the starting animation, and then after a certain amount of time, the screen prompt comes up, and then you can press the action key, and then the next animation plays. And while the next animation is going, if you press it again, it smooth fades into the third animation, which in this case is the player jumping off a ledge and landing on a platform below. Now, these are just test animations that I did very quickly. You can have it basically do any animation you want, and the script is made in a way where you could just keep adding. You could add sounds, you could add triggers, and JavaScript is very powerful, and Unity is very powerful, so you could add on to the script any way that you want to work for your game. Now, I'm going to open up the code that I have here in MonoDevelop, and this is what it looks like. It's fairly short, so let me open this up a little bit. And I'm going to go through this and explain to you how it works. Let me zoom in here. So we have a list of variables at the top. The first one is the GUI skin, and what that does is just that decides the style for the screen prompt that comes up uh, when the game is waiting for your input. And the first response wait time is the first time count until that response, the screen prompt, uh, shows up. So when you first start the game, it waits five seconds, and then it says press E for action one. Uh, and then the second response is after you press the first response, the time until says press action for, or press E for action two. And then these are the variables just checking uh, which action is enabled so it doesn't have multiple prompts coming up at the same time. And then the audio volume is just the audio volume in the scene, and you could uh, just keep adding variables. Like I said, that's, that's not uh, as important as the other ones. These are the main variables. So functions start. Um, I commented out this uh, old audio because that was uh, something I was testing earlier, but you can just get rid of that. Um, audio volume, it sets it, and then it, uh, the first thing it does in the function start uh, is that it waits for the first response time. And that, in this case, is five seconds. Let me just double check. Ah, it's actually four seconds. Okay. Well, four seconds, and then it turns the action one to two. I mean, <laughs> action one to true. And in function update, it's always checking. As soon as this is enabled, uh, the first response uh, function is valid. And what it's checking in the first response is if you press E, then it does action one and action one is it uh, disables the first screen prompt and then it waits for the second time until the second screen prompt comes up so it's just the order of sequence so um, pretty basic stuff and then the on GUI is just uh, looking for whenever that uh, screen prompt is enabled, it will display a GUI label on the screen. And in this case, it's press E for action one. And you can have it say whatever you want, position it however you want. I just, you know, screen dot width uh, divided by two just so it would be centered and then I could move it around um, by uh, as whatever pixels I needed. And it's not that important. So it's not exactly centered on the screen. And then uh, what you have here, this dot game object dot animation dot cross faded um, fade queued. This is basically the camera animation that when you press the input key, it transitions into the next animation in the list smoothly. Um, I have it transitioning here. It takes one second to fully transition to the next one, and you can change that however once you however much you want. That is just so the camera doesn't instantly. Uh, go to the next animation uh, with a jerky movement. Instead, it smoothly transitions as best as Unity can. And I'm using Unity 4, and they have a very new, uh, powerful animation engine, uh, but I am just using the simple one-line code for switching animations, and it works uh, pretty well. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to recreate this script and then explain it as I go along just so you can uh, write it yourself even though I just explained how all the logic works. Um, I'm just going to do it again so you guys can see it firsthand instead of just me explaining it to you and then hoping that you understand, uh, which hopefully you do. But if you do not, that is why I'm going to go through step by step just so there is uh, all confusion vo avoided. So I'm going to create a new script here. I'm just going to name it. This is going to be interactive cutscene uh, v2. So we're going to open this up. And I'm going to save the other one. And here you go. So this is the uh, default. So I'm going to recreate this variable. This is going to be a GUI skin that's what we will call this and this will be a gy skin there you go and that is where we drag our uh unity skin on there so we can edit the text and have it whatever font we want colors size anything like that okay i'm going to create another public variable first response wait time it's going to be float and this will be five seconds and if you do just five instead of 5.0 uh, that limits you to having only whole numbers as your uh, wait time so if I did it five I would only be able to do one two three four five and so on but if you do 5.0 you can do 5.1 .1, 0.2 point two three anything like that so that's very important and I'm making these public variables because that allows this script to be accessed by other scripts and that is very helpful when you are trying to send information over um, multiple scripts so you can have multiple actions happening from multiple scripts that interact with the cutscene so when you press an action you can have it send a signal to another script and then that will activate other objects in the scene so it all looks like one big cinematic sequence so going to be a, these are going to be private variables, and private variables are so you cannot uh, edit the options outside of mono development um, unless you have your debug mode turned on, but I, I don't even think then you can uh, edit it. So this just keeps everything private. And I'm going to make one more here. So this is the third um, animation. And I'll just leave the audio out. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, yield, wait four seconds, and then we put in the first, oh, I spelled fire, first response wait. So that in, instead of just having normal numbers in there, it replaces that with the variable. And because it's a float variable, that automatically counts. It replaces basically perfectly. So it would wait for this time up here instead of something like that. Okay, and then once that wait time is up, it enables can action one. All right, so now we're at step two function update so it checks if the first action is available or enabled then it does the first response method and if the second action is enabled and I'm misspelling and the person or I mean the player presses down on the action key which in this case is E you can also have it get button down uh, which goes into it looks at your input that you have for the game instead of pressing a random key you can assign that yourself um, the only thing then is the text that you display has to reflect on the input otherwise it would say press E but then you have it set as enter so it, it wouldn't match up and we're gonna have second response Okay, and can action two equals false. All right, that's it for the update. Now we're gonna move on to the first response. And this just checks if 
um, the player presses down on the E key. It does action one. And here is the crossfading. And I named it um, animation two. And you have to make sure that your animation names correspond to what you named them in the code. Otherwise, you will get an error because it will say that code does not exist. I mean, that animation. And that is true. So make sure you watch your uh, spelling. Okay, now here is the GUI code. So this is going to be... This will be... Um, setting the style of the font and color and all that the skin to the skin that we have set above that is so the text actually uses that skin because we haven't assigned the variable yet and now we just did all right so now we're gonna make those labels show up now and it has to be in the on GUI uh, function because that is a GUI function and the label is a label which is a GUI so it all has to work together if you have it in the wrong uh, function it will not show up and you will get an error and we have that now we gotta make the first action action one and what it does is it disables the first screen prompt and now it waits the second response wait variable and then it makes the second action true okay and now second response and this is just going to do another cross fading Hmm, if it's not giving me the option there, ah, of course, animation dot crossfade queued. Sometimes because mono development is uh, really helpful, if um, all right three, if you do not have the suggestions coming up, that either means that the code might not work, or it there is a, a typo and there is an error. So you might want to watch out for that. Because if this doesn't have the suggestions showing out, that means you probably have something misspelled. So you want to check that out. Okay, so that should be the code. And I'm going to save here. And do I have any errors? Uh, yes, I do. I have a few typos. And what are the errors? Ah, okay. It's that I was missing a parentheses. That makes sense. Okay. Oh, and that's a lowercase. All right. And there you go, and the errors are gone. So now if we replace this script with the new one, there you go. So it still has the same variables, so the skin still worked, but it does exactly the same thing, and now you guys know how it works. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. I can't wait to see what you guys do with this, having your own cinematic cutscenes. You can build off of this and add sound effects and, and more animations and accessing other objects with more variables. So uh, hopefully that will uh, come into play later and it will look really cool. So again, thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.